Welcome to the Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Play Picks and the Lines coming to you from the West Coast. Josh Lander joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we've got our player props video for you for game six of these NBA finals headed back to Boston. We also have our full game video up for you as well uh, with some of the best bets that we like in this one. So make sure you are liked and subscribed to that page. Continue to follow along with us. We'll be back if there is a game seven both hoping for a game seven, Nate, because he wants the seas obviously not to be eliminated. I just want a game seven, as most basketball fans probably do. So uh, looking for that. Uh, and as always, for this one, if you do still need a FanDuel or DraftKings account, head to FDPicks.com or DKPicks.com. Find those listings in your area, such as what we have for tonight's, or I guess let's say Thursday night's play of props. Nate, let's get into it. Yeah, man, I'm starting with Steph Curry, and it's not necessarily the low-hanging fruit of just saying he's going to get 29 points again, although I don't hate that bet. But there's better odds here for some other things if you can capitalize on the Celtics overplaying him the way they did. Um, and, and he's used to this, of course. This is something you have at every level of basketball when you're the best shooter on the floor. They're just going to face guard you. Steph has become a master of getting the assists that don't count as his assists and the actual assists. Uh, he had eight dimes in that game, despite the Warriors hitting, missing a ton of open threes, some of which came off his hand. So five and a half assists is plus 104. I, I think that's where I would start with Steph here. Also like the juice still for him to be the top point scorer in this game. He could not he could not get his prop at 29 and still be the top scorer. The Celtics are going to be balanced when they're at their best. They have maybe three guys around 25 points or, you know, 20 plus and they're not necessarily going to have one dude the way the Warriors are. No, this is not the Andrew Wiggins and Steph tandem. Uh Wiggs was just capitalizing in some ways. He had he had a great couple games, but no, this is still going to come down to Steph Curry gunning in Boston Garden, which we, when we last saw, he hit seven threes and his prop is lower because of this offer. He's, he, you know, four and a half threes. That's minus 110. But I think even better is for him to hit the most threes in this game. Plus one, ten, well, plus 130. I'm sorry. And I just, I don't see who's coming uh, for four or five unless, you know, the Celtics continue to just double him the way they did. Clay gets a bunch of open looks, but I, I just don't think it's going to be the exact. You can't expect the exact same approach from Udoka. He switches things up so much. And so this is what happens to Steph. Like I'm saying, at the end of series, he get he starts to get more and more that you know of a desperate defense trying to get the ball off his hands. So his last three against Dallas, 28 total assists, um, 17 versus Memphis. They're they're tough, and, and 19 versus Denver. So I'm I'm leaning towards the assist first and foremost, but I don't mind him just being the most because he is the finals MVP at this point. Uh, probably win or lose, but we'll see what happens in these final two games. Hopefully. Yeah, I mean, if, if Tatum goes for back-to-back 30 pieces and carries his team to the finals, I mean, he's got to get it. So I, I will say that. Sure. Um, and, and really – there's a likely there's a world where he doesn't do that specifically and Jay, you know Jalen Brown comes with a nice game and maybe it's more of a team effort and maybe Steph still wins even if the the, the Warriors don't win the series but moving away from that I, I do like the assists I do think that even though he's you know Udoka does mix it up in terms of blitzing and not blitzing Steph I still think that uh he's going to do it enough times that those assists I, I do like those as well uh, as we saw the eight from him last game um yeah you know you can consider any of those but I I prefer those out of all the ones for Steph and then potentially um you know the, the leading scorer as well or, or most threes but uh as I mentioned in the game video if you checked it out which hopefully you did because you are liked and subscribed Marcus Smart once again I said he was disrespected 14 and a half points hit those 23 of six from three um you know he continues i can just repeat some of the stuff that i was able to say before last game which is nice and add a few stats 17 a game over his last uh in this series rather you take away that game two that was pitiful it's up to 22 points a game for him on 45 percent from three uh and on eight attempts a game really good last nine versus the dubs make it 18 five and six for the man three of seven from three 43 percent yada yada his two and a half threes are minus 205 at dk unfortunately i'm a bit get more scared of three and a half threes but it is at home um you know if you wanted to buy a few you're still not going to get uh even odds on his three pointers because they i guess they figured that out but maybe you look at uh fan there and check out the lines.com for that great odds checker as well so you can shop those player props correctly uh unlike i did uh before this as i don't know the fan one 
ones right now. Uh, so continue to look for those. But yeah, Marcus Smart, either way, take, I'm taking his overs and it's, it's just a great time for him. I do want to say just because, um, you know, I, I know we mentioned it with Steph. Clay, I, I do think it's a good game for him because once again, of the fact that they will throw some mixing, mixing in of that blitzing of Steph to make sure he doesn't get anything from anywhere on, on this side of half court, um, that, that always opens up Clay because even Clay with a hand in his face is still an open enough shot. It's really got to be shut down. And if he's feeling it right now, it's game six, man. I, I wouldn't bet against game six Clay. I'll just put it that way. So. So we're just throwing Clay in there in between each prop and uh, not not actually taking him specifically. I, I love it. But no, this does seem like a Marcus Smart game um, in terms of, you know, being the, the quote heartbeat of the Celtics. And his confidence is what they need. Like if Tatum had his mentality, the, the series would be over in the other direction. Uh, I mean, it's just... Smart is the only guy who really seemed to come into that game five with an idea of the urgency, with a, with an ability to play hard on both ends and and with focus. I mean, he actually cut down on the terrible turnovers he had in the past two games while well, the team just couldn't get much going. Um, yeah, he never lacks for confidence and he will be shooting down the stretch. Um, but with that home crowd at his back, I expect better results or, you know, the same results is definitely getting you over 50, yeah. 15 points. So yeah, uh, that he's a barometer for the Celtics. As I said, last time, 18 plus in a win is a good, is a good double in that sense, because if he's getting you 16 to 18 points, that's, that's the Celtics path to victory. And also Robert Williams, time Lord, just being out there for, 30 plus minutes is a path to victory yeah. for them. Um, his, his points and rebounds are still pretty damn low. Seven and a half points with terrible odds, eight and a half rebounds with good odds. Uh, really, really good odds for him to, to put it together and get, and get a double, double plus four seventy five at DK. You take the double, double in a win plus 700 at fan duel. I think that that is the Celtics path to victory here. As we saw in game three, if they can own the paint just through one guy, basically, uh, making the Warriors adjust all their shots, making them live from the three-point line, pair that with their ability to to face guard Steph, as you've been talking about. And that's that's a recipe for success. And then crash the glass because the Warriors are playing all these tiny lineups. Williams in his last three here, he's 11 for 13 from the field, almost all on lobs or catches and then put up back, put back. So he's averaging yeah. 10 points, 8.3 rebounds. He's a plus 38. He has a 12% offensive rebounding rate. Um, wow. and you know, the Warriors slightly worse rebounding on the road in these playoffs. And so I think he, he's definitely due for either 10 points or 10 rebounds, which he's done in five straight home games here in the playoffs. So betting either of those or betting on the double, double with that kind of juice you're getting seems like a great option mm-hmm. to me. Yeah, it seems like a game theory for sure. I mean, I do worry about the one of them he, uh, sometimes with him, but I, I still think his props are good. Um, obviously, there's the juice is worth definitely the squeeze on the double double and a win. Uh, I do see that happening for them as I still, as we've been saying, we like them to win. So uh, the 30 minutes he got, I know it seems like sometimes he's a bit hurt and hobbly, but uh, the 30 minutes he got, as you mentioned, they're still super impactful uh, and he's keeping them out of the paint as best he can. Uh, I would say Wiggins is obviously putting on a really good show on the boards as well. But um, let's finish things here with Draymond under. Uh, I got to look at his PRA, points, rebounds, and assists combined, 21 and a half. We're back in Boston, kid, as they say. Uh, his last two in Boston, you know, he, he went for two points a game in those two, both of them, six and a half boards, five and a half assists. Uh, not close to the 21 and a half points, rebounds, and assists that he currently sits at. Uh, for the series in his 35 minutes a game, you know, five points, seven boards, six assists. So you're still sitting at well, you know, four under the uh, the PRA total that he needs in this game. His last 10 versus Boston, all under that as well about 18 combined uh in the playoffs on the road 19 combined even total uh in the playoffs 21 total combined like right at it so uh i think this is a good set i think this is too high for him i think it really should be closer to like 18 19 and a half at most uh and that you know you can feel pretty comfortable with an under for dre uh back in boston especially where he's clearly letting things get to him a little bit uh as the clear uh out in villain in in boston yeah, he almost doesn't ever get this prop. I mean, he hasn't gotten it in the finals at any point. Uh, the Mavericks were basically letting him walk into the paint and do some damage. So in that series, he got it a few times. But 
against Memphis, which is a lot more similar to what you're getting with this Boston defense. Yeah, he's not even sniffing 22 PRA. His impact, as we all know, is on the defensive end. Uh, he was able to pile up a few assists because of that Steph double teaming, getting the four on three. But I think that's the secondary adjustment the Celtics will make. They will be better on the four on threes, on getting on, on forcing Draymond some mistakes. And yeah, he's not really looking at the rim right now, especially not in Boston. So it's hard to imagine him piling up enough rebounds assists to carry you over 21 and a half. Yeah, and I mean, you could even just feel pretty good probably right about the points with him, which are at seven and a half, uh, those two points that he's averaging. I mean, you get scared that he gets the the little random wide open layups because nobody thinks he's even going to go towards the rim um, to get to eight. Uh, that's why I like adding it all, just because even the assists and rebounds still feel high for him. So the combination makes you feel a bit more comfortable. But that is all the time we have for you guys in this one. Make sure you are liked and subscribed to that page. Continue to follow along with us. Hopefully we have one more of these for you guys in a game seven. So until we See you next. Happy betting.